It was a quiet evening as Mayor William Carter, the beloved black mayor of a bustling city, drove through the streets on his way home from a long day of meetings. His thoughts drifted to the city council sessions he had attended earlier and the community projects he was spearheading. William had dedicated his life to improving the lives of his constituents, and though the work was demanding, he felt pride in what he had accomplished. His city had flourished under his leadership, and he was known for his hands-on approach, often visiting different neighborhoods to talk to residents directly. As he drove, the atmosphere inside his car was calm. He had just finished a call with his wife, telling her he'd be home soon for dinner. The streetlights flickered on as dusk settled over the city, and William's mind wandered to the weekend ahead, where he had plans to meet with local leaders to discuss youth programs. However, the calm was short-lived. Out of nowhere, William noticed flashing blue and red lights in his rearview mirror. A police cruiser was tailing him, its siren blaring loudly. Surprised, William pulled over to the side of the road. His first instinct was that there must have been some mistake. He was well within the speed limit, his car registration was up to date, and he had done nothing wrong. He lowered his window and waited patiently, watching as a police officer slowly approached his vehicle. The officer's face was stern, and his posture suggested a readiness for confrontation. William's heart began to beat a little faster. He had dealt with situations like this before. Being a black man in a position of power didn't shield him from the reality of racial profiling. But tonight, Something about the officer's demeanor made him uneasy. The officer reached the window, his hand resting casually on his holster. License and registration, he barked without any greeting or explanation. The tone was cold, bordering on aggressive. William, maintaining his composure, handed over his documents, wondering what had triggered this unnecessary encounter. As William handed the officer his license and registration, he took a deep breath, reminding himself to stay calm. This wasn't the first time he had been stopped for no apparent reason, and he knew it wouldn't be the last. His status as mayor didn't make him immune to the prejudices that still ran deep in society. But tonight, he hoped the interaction would end quickly and without incident. The officer, Officer Greg James, glanced at the license without even looking at the name. His focus seemed to be more on William's appearance than anything else. James frowned slightly, as if something about William's calm demeanor irritated him. You know why I pulled you over? He asked, his voice sharp and condescending. No, officer, I don't, William responded, keeping his tone respectful but firm. He had learned long ago that standing up for himself in these situations was important, but he also knew how quickly things could escalate if he wasn't careful. His position as mayor gave him confidence, but he was also aware that this officer likely didn't recognize him. James didn't offer any explanation. Instead, he took William's documents and walked back to his patrol car leaving William sitting in silence. The minutes dragged on as William waited, his hands resting on the steering wheel. He watched through the rearview mirror as the officer seemed to be taking an unusually long time checking his information. Something didn't feel right. As the seconds ticked by, William's thoughts shifted. Why had he been pulled over? He wasn't speeding, he hadn't violated any traffic laws, and his car was properly registered. The more he thought about it, the clearer it became. This wasn't about a traffic violation. This was about something else entirely. Officer James sat in his patrol car, his eyes fixed on the license in his hand. His gut churned with frustration. It was just another routine stop, another vehicle that looked suspicious to him. But something about the way the driver had looked at him, calm, almost defiant in his composure, had set James on edge. He hated that look the look that said the driver wasn't intimidated by him. James didn't bother to run William's name through the system. He didn't need to. In his mind, he had already made his judgment about the man behind the wheel. The fact that William was driving a nice car, an expensive, well-kept vehicle, only seemed to irritate James more. The officer was used to patrolling these streets, and in his eyes, someone like William didn't belong behind the wheel of such a car. It was an unspoken prejudice that drove his actions. The truth was, Officer James had a history of profiling drivers based on nothing more than their appearance. He had been on the force for years, and though his methods were never openly challenged, they were often whispered about among his peers. He operated with a chip on his shoulder, 
and his encounters with black men often ended with unnecessary hostility. Tonight would be no different. James, feeling the need to assert his authority, decided that he wouldn't let this driver off easily. He wanted to put him in his place. And so, instead of quickly resolving the traffic stop, James took his time, letting Williams sit and wait. It was a power play, a tactic meant to make the driver feel small, to remind him who was in charge. With a smirk on his face, James finally stepped out of the patrol car, ready to continue his charade of authority. He had no idea that the man he was dealing with was the mayor, and that his actions were about to set off a chain of events he couldn't control. When Officer James returned to William's car, the air between them was thick with unspoken tension. William could sense the hostility radiating from the officer, even before a word was spoken. He had seen this before. The cold, dismissive attitude. The thinly veiled contempt. William had encountered officers like James throughout his life. Men who used their badges as a tool for dominance, rather than protection. James leaned down resting his arms on the window of William's car. Step out of the vehicle, he ordered, his voice flat and authoritative. There was no explanation, no reason given, just a command meant to be obeyed. William blinked, surprised by the escalation. He hadn't done anything wrong, and now he was being asked to leave his car. May I ask why, officer? William replied, his tone calm but firm. He wasn't going to be intimidated, but he also knew that pushing too hard could lead to trouble. As a black man in America, even as a mayor, William understood that things could turn ugly very quickly. James's eyes narrowed. You're not asking the questions here. Step out of the vehicle, he repeated, his hand hovering near his belt. The threat was implied, though unspoken. William felt a surge of frustration, but he controlled it. This wasn't the place to lose his temper. Still, his patience was wearing thin. Slowly, William unbuckled his seatbelt and opened the door. As he stepped out of the car, he stood tall, his posture confident. If this officer was trying to humiliate him, William wasn't going to let it happen. He had worked too hard and come too far to be broken by a power-hungry cop on a random traffic stop. The officer stepped back, his hands still near his belt, as if ready to escalate the situation further. The street was quiet, but the tension was palpable. William knew that whatever was happening, it wasn't about a traffic violation. It was about power, and the officer was trying to assert his dominance over him. As William stood outside his car, the officer glared at him, clearly waiting for him to make a wrong move. The quiet night was now charged with tension, and William could feel the weight of the moment pressing down on him. He was tired of situations like this, tired of being treated like he didn't belong and tonight he decided he wasn't going to stay silent. With calm but deliberate steps, William moved closer to the officer. He made sure to keep his hands visible, knowing that any sudden movement could be misinterpreted. As he stood face to face with Officer James, William met his gaze, his expression firm but composed. The officer was expecting fear or compliance, but William was about to give him neither. Do you know who I am? William asked, his voice steady but carrying an undertone of authority. He wasn't asking the question out of arrogance. He was giving the officer a chance to correct his mistake. This wasn't about pulling rank. It was about respect. William had spent years working to earn the trust and admiration of his city, and he wasn't going to let one officer tarnish that. James scoffed, clearly unimpressed. I don't care who you are, he sneered. You do what I say, or things are going to get worse for you. William's patience snapped. He had been willing to cooperate to give the officer the benefit of the doubt. But this blatant disrespect was too much. He was the mayor of this city, and this man had no idea who he was dealing with. William knew that he could de-escalate the situation, but only if he made it clear that he wasn't going to be bullied. I'm Mayor William Carter, William said, his voice firm, and you're making a big mistake. For the first time, a flicker of uncertainty crossed James' face. He hadn't expected this. The moment William introduced himself as the mayor, a ripple of shock briefly flashed across Officer James's face, but it was quickly replaced by something else, defiance. Instead of backing down or reconsidering his approach, James hardened his stance. He had already gone too far, and in his mind, admitting that he had made a mistake would be a sign of weakness. The fact that William was the mayor didn't seem to matter. Mayor, huh?
James said, his tone dripping with sarcasm. Well, I don't care if you're the president, you're still going to follow my orders. William's jaw tightened, but he refused to lose his composure. This was no longer just a routine traffic stop. It had become a personal confrontation. James clearly didn't respect his position or his authority, and it was clear that this was about something much deeper than a traffic violation. It was about power and control. The officer stepped closer, trying to assert dominance over William. Hands on the hood, James barked, his voice louder now. A few cars had driven by, slowing down to see what was happening, but no one stopped. The street was otherwise quiet, but William could feel the humiliation rising in his chest. This was a spectacle, and the officer was trying to make an example out of him. William stood his ground, refusing to move immediately. I've complied with everything you've asked, he said, his voice steady. I've done nothing wrong, and this is escalating unnecessarily. But James wasn't interested in reasoning. I said, hands on the hood, he repeated, his hand now firmly resting on his belt, as if to remind William of the power he held. It was a threat. Thinly veiled, but undeniable. William, knowing that any further resistance could result in an even more dangerous situation, slowly placed his hands on the hood of his car. He could feel the cold metal under his palms, but what stung more was the blatant disrespect he was being shown. Even as the mayor, a black man in power, he was still subject to the whims of an officer with a badge and unchecked authority. Despite the humiliation of being forced to place his hands on the hood of his car, William maintained his composure. He knew that losing his temper or reacting out of frustration would only give Officer James more reason to escalate the situation. He had been in enough confrontations throughout his life to know that calmness in the face of aggression was often the best weapon. William took a deep breath, focusing on the rhythmic rise and fall of his chest. His mind raced, but his body remained still, projecting a calm exterior. He knew that this encounter wasn't just about him. It was about the larger issue of power dynamics between law enforcement and black men in America. As mayor, he had a responsibility to handle this situation in a way that could set an example for others, even in the face of personal humiliation. As James searched the car without cause, William clenched his fists, the injustice of it all burning beneath his calm surface. He had done nothing wrong. He hadn't violated any laws, and yet here he was, being treated like a common criminal. But William wasn't just any man. He was the mayor of this city, and his calm defiance in the face of this blatant abuse of power was his silent protest. A small crowd began to gather at a distance, watching the scene unfold. A few people whispered to each other, clearly recognizing the mayor. Some took out their phones to record the incident, sensing that something wasn't right. William could feel their eyes on him but he remained focused, refusing to give Officer James the satisfaction of seeing him flinch. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, James stepped back from the car. Nothing suspicious, he muttered, though his tone was far from apologetic. He looked at William with thinly veiled contempt. You can lower your hands now. William lowered his hands, his heart still racing, but his face composed. He knew that this was far from over, but for now he had maintained his dignity. James may have tried to humiliate him, but William had refused to let it break him. Officer James, frustrated by William's calm defiance, wasn't ready to let the situation end so easily. He could sense the crowd gathering nearby, and the last thing he wanted was to appear weak or indecisive in front of onlookers. In his mind, William's refusal to bow to his authority was a direct challenge, and James wasn't going to back down. You think this is over? James asked, his voice dripping with hostility. You don't get to walk away just because you're the mayor. You're not above the law. William, still standing tall, narrowed his eyes. I've complied with everything you've asked, he replied, his voice firm but measured. If you had a valid reason for pulling me over, you've yet to provide it. James's face flushed with anger. He wasn't used to being talked to like this, especially not by someone he saw as beneath him. He took a step closer to William his hand still on his belt, ready to escalate things further. You're not the one in control here, James snapped. I am. The tension between the two men was palpable. The crowd, now larger and more curious, had moved closer, murmuring among themselves. Several people were openly recording the encounter on their phones, capturing every word, every movement. 
James could feel their eyes on him, and it only fueled his desire to assert his authority. Without warning, James grabbed William's arm, pulling him roughly toward the patrol car. Turn around, the officer demanded. I'm placing you under arrest for obstruction. The crowd gasped audibly, and William's eyes widened in disbelief. You can't be serious, me said, though his voice remained calm. But James was serious. He had let his pride and anger drive him to a point of no return. This wasn't about justice or the law anymore. It was about power, and James was determined to show everyone that he was in control. As James grabbed William's arm and began to march him toward the patrol car, the onlookers could no longer remain silent. People in the crowd started shouting in protest, their voices growing louder as they realized what was happening. The fact that the mayor, someone they knew and respected, was being treated this way sparked immediate outrage. Some couldn't believe what they were seeing, while others had expected something like this to happen eventually, knowing the tensions between law enforcement and the black community. Hey, that's Mayor Carter, someone in the crowd shouted. What are you doing? He's done nothing wrong. Phones were raised higher as more people recorded the confrontation. The crowd, now emboldened by their collective anger, moved closer though they remained cautious of the officer's unpredictable behavior. William could feel the support of the people behind him, and though he was still in the middle of the conflict, the presence of the crowd gave him a sense of strength. James, however, didn't seem to care about the growing public outcry. He tightened his grip on William's arm, determined to show that he wasn't going to be swayed by the crowd's reactions. His face was set in a deep scowl, and he ignored the calls for him to stop. Back off! James barked at the crowd, waving his free hand at them in warning. But the people didn't back down. If anything, they became more vocal, their frustration and anger rising with each passing moment. They knew that what was happening wasn't just wrong. It was a blatant abuse of power. Several people called out for more officers, hoping that someone else would intervene and stop this madness before it got worse. William, sensing the situation spiraling out of control, decided to speak directly to the crowd. Please stay calm, he said, his voice loud enough to carry over the noise. This will be dealt with properly. The crowd quieted slightly, but their concern remained evident. William knew that he had to find a way to de-escalate the situation before someone got hurt. But he also knew that Officer James was beyond reason at this point. The public humiliation reached its peak as Officer James forcefully pushed William against the patrol car, his hands roughly patting him down in front of the growing crowd. The scene was surreal. Here was the mayor of the city, a man respected by many being treated like a criminal on the very streets he had worked so hard to improve. The air was thick with tension, and the crowd's murmurs had turned into full-blown protests. You can't do this, someone shouted from the back of the crowd. He's our mayor. Another voice chimed in. This is an abuse of power. James ignored the protests, his focus entirely on asserting his control over the situation. William's hands were now firmly planted on the hood of the car, his head slightly bowed as the officer searched him in full view of everyone. The crowd watched, horrified and enraged, as their mayor endured this public humiliation with quiet dignity. William remained calm, but inside, he could feel the weight of the injustice pressing down on him. Phones continued to record, and within moments the videos were being uploaded to social media. The incident was going viral in real time, with captions like, Mayor Carter wrongfully arrested, and Police Officer Abuses Power, flooding the internet. The people recording knew that this wasn't just a local issue. It was part of a much larger national conversation about racial profiling and police misconduct. William, though humiliated, never lost his composure. He knew that what was happening would have repercussions far beyond this moment and he was determined to handle it with grace. Even as Officer James roughly cuffed his wrists, William remained steady, his eyes focused on the horizon. He refused to let this officer see him broken. For James, however, the situation was rapidly spiraling out of control. What had started as a routine traffic stop had escalated into something much bigger, and the crowd's anger was growing by the second. But instead of backing down, James doubled down on his aggression, determined to prove that he was in charge. As Officer James tightened the handcuffs around William's wrists, the mayor stood tall, refusing to let the humiliation strip him of his dignity. 
The cold metal bit into his skin, but the pain wasn't physical. It was emotional, a deep sense of injustice weighing down on him. Despite everything, William knew he had to maintain his composure, not just for himself, but for everyone watching. The crowd's voices, now filled with anger and disbelief, echoed in his ears, but he remained calm. William looked straight ahead, his mind focused on the bigger picture. This wasn't just about him. This was about a system that allowed people like James to abuse their power. William had fought for years to bring about change in his city, to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community. And now he was living the very nightmare that so many others had experienced before him. James, oblivious to the gravity of his actions, seemed to enjoy the spectacle. He pulled William's arms roughly behind his back, pushing him toward the patrol car with a smug look on his face. You're under arrest for obstruction, James said, his voice loud enough for the crowd to hear, as if making an example out of the mayor would prove his dominance. William knew that the charge was baseless, but he wasn't going to argue. He wasn't going to give James the satisfaction of seeing him react with anger or frustration. Instead, he held his head high, knowing that this moment, this injustice, would soon come back to haunt the officer. The crowd, however, wasn't as restrained. Several people shouted in protest, their frustration growing as they watched their mayor being dragged away like a common criminal. This is wrong, one man yelled. He's our mayor, not a criminal. But James didn't care. He was too blinded by his need for control, too caught up in his own sense of authority to see the storm he was creating. As Officer James continued his aggressive treatment of Mayor Carter, it became clear that he was crossing a line. The situation was no longer just about a traffic stop or an arrest. It had turned into an abuse of power. The crowd, now fully aware of the injustice happening before their eyes, began to voice their outrage louder. Shouts of anger and disbelief filled the air. But James seemed determined to maintain his hold on the situation. James, in his arrogance, still believed that he was in control. He dragged William toward the patrol car, forcefully pushing him into the back seat as if to send a message to the crowd. But his actions only fanned the flames of their anger. A few brave souls stepped forward, trying to reason with the officer. You're making a mistake, one man called out. You can't do this. But James, already too far down this path, wasn't listening. His eyes were focused on William, who sat calmly in the back seat, his wrists still cuffed. Even now, William exuded an air of authority and poise that rattled James. It was clear that the officer's actions weren't having the intended effect. William wasn't breaking. He was remaining strong in the face of adversity. <laughs> Several people in the crowd pulled out their phones to record the scene, capturing every moment of the officer's overreach. The videos showed a black mayor, respected and admired by his community, being treated like a criminal by an officer with a clear agenda. It wasn't long before those videos started spreading online, shared by people who were appalled by what they were witnessing. James, however, remained oblivious to the fact that his actions were being broadcast for the world to see. His arrogance blinded him to the consequences of his behavior. He didn't realize that this wasn't just a local issue anymore. This was about to become national news. Inside the patrol car, William sat quietly, his mind racing. He knew that what was happening would have far-reaching consequences, and he silently prepared himself for the storm that was about to follow. As the scene unfolded, one bystander, a woman named Latoya, had been recording the entire encounter from the moment Officer James first approached William's car. Latoya, a local resident and community activist, knew that something was wrong the moment she saw James's hostile body language. From the start, she had suspected that the situation would escalate, and now she had the footage to prove it. Standing at the edge of the crowd, Latoya kept her phone steady, making sure to capture every detail, the officer's aggression, William's calm composure, and the growing outrage of the onlookers. She knew the importance of documenting incidents like these, where the abuse of power could so easily be swept under the rug if there were no evidence. As James shoved William into the back of the patrol car, Latoya zoomed in, making sure to capture the expression on the officer's face. His arrogance was clear, his actions brazen, and Latoya knew that the footage she was capturing would be vital in holding him accountable. She had seen too many incidents like this go unnoticed, but not this time. 
The crowd around her grew more agitated, but Latoya remained focused, determined to capture everything. She could hear people murmuring in disbelief, asking each other how something like this could happen in their city, to their mayor. This isn't right, a man beside her muttered. Someone needs to stop this. But Latoya knew that confronting the officer directly wouldn't help. The most powerful tool she had was her camera, and she was using it to ensure that James's actions wouldn't be forgotten. Once she had enough footage, she quickly uploaded the video to social media, captioning it, Mayor William Carter wrongfully arrested, abuse of power by Officer James. Within minutes, the video started gaining traction. People across the city and beyond began sharing it, outraged by what they were seeing. Latoya watched as the views climbed higher and higher, knowing that this was only the beginning. As the situation continued to spiral out of control, Officer James made one final, devastating mistake. Feeling the pressure from the crowd's growing outrage and the defiance in William's calm demeanor, James decided to push his authority even further. He slammed the door of the patrol car shut, leaving William locked inside before turning to face the crowd. What's your problem? James barked at the bystanders, his voice filled with frustration. This man is under arrest and there's nothing you can do about it. The crowd didn't back down. Their anger was palpable and several people shouted back at the officer. You're out of line, someone yelled. You can't treat the mayor like this. But James wasn't listening. He felt cornered and in his mind, doubling down on his actions was the only way to maintain control. He reached for his radio and called for backup, determined to show the crowd that he had the power to handle the situation. He thought that bringing in more officers would silence the protests, but instead it only added fuel to the fire. The crowd's frustration grew with every passing second, and several people stepped forward, demanding answers. What's the charge? One man asked, his voice filled with disbelief. What has he done? James, his face flushed with anger, refused to engage. He had already pushed the situation too far, and deep down, he knew it. But instead of admitting his mistake, he chose to dig in even deeper. The weight of the crowd's judgment was pressing down on him, but he wasn't willing to back down. Inside the patrol car, William watched as the situation escalated. He could see the frustration on the faces of the people who had gathered, and he knew that James had lost control of the situation. But William also knew that things could get even worse if someone didn't intervene soon. The turning point came when a new officer arrived on the scene, a higher-ranking sergeant named Officer Jacobs. He had been called in as backup, but the moment he stepped out of his patrol car, he could see that something wasn't right. The crowd, the hostility, the tension in the air, it all pointed to an incident that had escalated far beyond what was necessary. Jacobs pushed his way through the crowd, his eyes locking on Officer James, who stood defiantly beside the patrol car. What's going on here, James? Jacobs asked, his tone sharp but professional. James, still stubborn, crossed his arms over his chest. Routine stop, he muttered. The man resisted. I had to arrest him. Jacobs frowned, clearly unconvinced. He glanced at the patrol car, his eyes narrowing as he recognized the man sitting inside. His heart skipped a beat. Wait, is that? Jacobs took a step closer and his eyes widened in disbelief. That's Mayor Carter. James's face went pale as the realization hit him. He had just arrested the mayor of the city, publicly humiliated him in front of a crowd, and treated him like a common criminal, all without just cause. For the first time, James looked genuinely shaken. Jacobs turned on him, his voice filled with anger. You arrested the mayor? Are you out of your mind? The crowd, sensing the shift in the situation, began murmuring loudly. More people recognized William now, and the atmosphere shifted from disbelief to outrage. The news was spreading fast. The mayor had been wrongfully arrested by one of his own officers. James stammered, trying to defend himself, but Jacobs wasn't having it. He marched over to the patrol car and opened the door, gesturing for William to step out. Mr. Mayor, I'm so sorry, Jacob said, his voice filled with genuine regret. This never should have happened. As Officer Jacobs helped Mayor William Carter out of the patrol car, the reality of the situation began to sink in for Officer James. His face drained of color, 
and his once arrogant posture collapsed under the weight of what he had done. The crowd's murmurs grew louder, and more people began to film the unfolding scene. The humiliation he had tried to impose on the mayor was now turning on him, and he could feel the scrutiny of every pair of eyes around him. James stood frozen, his mind racing as he tried to process the gravity of his actions. He had made a colossal mistake, one that could not be undone. Arresting a sitting mayor, one beloved by the community, without any legitimate reason was not something that would be brushed aside easily. For the first time, James realized that he was not in control anymore. The power he had been so desperate to assert was slipping through his fingers. Officer Jacobs, now aware of the seriousness of the situation, turned to James, his face a mix of disbelief and anger. James, what were you thinking? He demanded, his voice harsh but controlled. Do you have any idea what you've just done? James stammered, trying to explain, but the words wouldn't come. The excuses he had used before, about authority, about control, sounded hollow now. He had let his bias and ego drive his actions, and now it was all unraveling before him. The crowd, sensing that something big was about to happen, pressed closer, their phones still recording. William, now standing beside Jacobs, rubbed his sore wrists where the handcuffs had dug into his skin. He looked at James, not with anger, but with a calm authority that made the officer feel even smaller. You've made a serious mistake, officer, William said, his voice steady, one that's going to cost you. The crowd hearing William's words erupted in support. The dynamic had shifted completely. James, once in control, was now the one facing the consequences of his actions. As the scene continued to unfold, Officer James, now visibly shaken, reached for his radio once more. His earlier call for backup had already brought Officer Jacobs to the scene, but James, still clinging to the hope that more officers might help him regain control, called for additional units. His voice, once full of authority, now trembled slightly as he requested more help. But the call only backfired. Within minutes, more patrol cars arrived, lights flashing as officers emerged from their vehicles. But instead of taking James aside, they quickly realized the gravity of the situation. Several officers recognized Mayor Carter immediately, and their expressions shifted from confusion to shock as they pieced together what had happened. One of the arriving officers, Sergeant Davis, walked straight up to Jacobs, who was still standing protectively by William's side. What's going on here? Davis asked, his voice low but tense. Jacobs quickly explained the situation, his frustration evident as he recounted how James had wrongfully arrested the mayor and escalated the situation unnecessarily. Davis' eyes darkened as he processed the information. This is going to be a mess, he muttered, casting a sidelong glance at James, who stood awkwardly by his patrol car, looking smaller by the minute. The crowd, now buzzing with anticipation, watched as the additional officers huddled together, clearly discussing how to handle the rapidly escalating crisis. But it was clear that James's backup had arrived too late to help him. The presence of more officers did nothing to defuse the situation. In fact, it only made it clearer that James had been acting on his own, without justification. William, still calm and composed, watched as the officers deliberated. He could feel the weight of the crowd's support behind him. And though the situation had been humiliating, he knew that justice was finally within reach. The tables had turned, and James was now the one on the defensive. Just as the situation seemed to reach its breaking point, a new vehicle pulled up and out stepped Chief of Police Rebecca Shaw. The crowd, already murmuring in disbelief, fell into a hushed silence as the chief made her way toward the group of officers. Chief Shaw was a respected figure in the city, known for her commitment to accountability and transparency within the department. If anyone could bring order to the chaos, it was her. As Chief Shaw approached, her sharp eyes took in the scene. Officer James standing awkwardly by his car, Mayor Carter surrounded by officers, and the crowd of concerned citizens recording everything. Shaw's expression was unreadable, but her posture was authoritative, and the weight of her presence was immediately felt. She walked straight up to Officer Jacobs and Sergeant Davis, her voice calm but commanding. What's the situation here, she asked, though it was clear from her tone that she already had a good idea. Jacobs quickly explained everything, how James had escalated a routine stop, wrongfully arrested the mayor, and publicly humiliated him without cause. 
Chief Shaw's face darkened as she listened, her eyes flicking briefly to James, who looked like he wished the ground would swallow him whole. When Jacobs finished, Chief Shaw nodded grimly. She turned to face Mayor Carter, her expression softening slightly. Mr. Mayor, I am deeply sorry for what has happened here tonight, she said, her voice filled with sincerity. This should never have happened, I assure you. We will be taking immediate action to address this. William nodded, appreciating the chief's professionalism, but he knew this apology was only the beginning. There was still much to be done to make sure that this incident didn't get swept under the rug. Turning to James, Chief Shaw's demeanor hardened. Officer James, you've crossed a line, she said, her voice sharp. Effective immediately, you are relieved of duty pending a full investigation. The crowd erupted in approval at the chief's decision, and James's face went pale as the full weight of his actions hit him. The moment Chief Shaw declared Officer James relieved of duty, the tension that had been building in the air finally broke. The crowd, which had been on edge for what felt like hours, erupted in cheers and applause. People shouted words of support for Mayor Carter, and there was an overwhelming sense of justice finally being served. But for Officer James, the nightmare had only just begun. James stood frozen, his mouth slightly agape, as the reality of his situation sank in. He had lost control of the narrative, lost the power he had been so desperate to maintain, and now he was being publicly humiliated in front of the very crowd he had tried to dominate. The handcuffs he had placed on Mayor Carter had now become symbolic shackles on his own career. Sergeant Davis stepped forward and gently but firmly removed James's badge and gun, symbols of his authority that were no longer his to wield. The once arrogant officer looked down at the ground, too ashamed to meet the eyes of the crowd or his fellow officers. Davis gave him a brief, cold glance before turning back to Chief Shaw. The chief, not one to allow such misconduct to go unpunished, made it clear that this was just the beginning of the consequences James would face. You'll report to internal affairs in the morning, she said sternly, and we will be conducting a full review of your conduct during this incident. James, is still unable to process what was happening, simply nodded. His mind was racing. What had he done? How had he let this happen? Just hours ago, he had been a respected officer, and now his career was in freefall. Everything he had worked for was slipping away, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. The crowd, sensing the finality of the moment, continued to record and document everything. The videos would be shared far and wide a testament to the accountability being demanded from law enforcement officers. For James, this was the end of the road. As Officer James was led away from the scene, the focus shifted back to Mayor Carter, who had remained composed throughout the ordeal. The crowd, still energized by the dramatic turn of events, now turned their attention to William, many of them calling out words of encouragement and support. The humiliation he had endured had been transformed into a moment of triumph. Not just for him, but for the entire community. William took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the cuffs that had once been on his wrists, now replaced by the comforting support of his people. The ordeal had tested his patience and his dignity, but it had also reinforced his commitment to justice. He wasn't just a mayor, he was a leader, and his community needed to see that even in the face of adversity, he would stand strong. Chief Shaw approached William, her face still filled with regret. Mr. Mayor, I can't apologize enough for what happened tonight, she said, her voice filled with sincerity. This is not the standard of policing that we strive for, and we will be making sure this never happens again. William nodded, appreciating her words, but knowing that actions would speak louder than apologies. Chief, I respect that you've taken swift action, he replied, his tone calm but resolute. But we both know that this isn't just about one officer. There's a deeper issue here and it needs to be addressed. Chief Shaw's eyes met William's and she knew he was right. I agree, she said. We need real change, and I'm committed to working with you to make that happen. William turned to the crowd, raising his hand to signal for silence. The voices quieted as they looked to their mayor, waiting for his words. Thank you all for your support, William began, his voice strong and clear. Tonight was a difficult night, but it has shown us something important. We have the power to demand accountability, and together we will build a community where justice is truly served. The crowd erupted in applause, their energy revitalized by William's leadership. 
The mayor had not only survived the ordeal, he had emerged stronger, and his authority had been restored in the eyes of the people. As news of the incident spread, the city erupted in discussion. Social media platforms buzzed with posts, videos, and hashtags. People shared the footage of the confrontation between Officer James and Mayor Carter, with many expressing outrage at how the mayor had been treated. Justice for Mayor Carter and Chuck heard you hold police accountable quickly began trending, sparking a larger conversation about police conduct and racial profiling. Local news stations picked up the story almost immediately, broadcasting the footage recorded by bystanders. Commentators and experts weighed in, debating not just the actions of Officer James, but the larger issues at play. It wasn't long before the story caught the attention of national outlets, who began covering the incident as part of the ongoing dialogue about law enforcement and racial injustice across the country. For many in the city, this was a turning point. William Carter wasn't just their mayor. He was a symbol of progress, a leader who had worked tirelessly to improve the lives of the people in his community. Seeing him treated like a criminal had struck a nerve. The public demanded answers and called for changes within the police department, insisting that Officer James's actions be met with severe consequences. City Hall was flooded with messages of support for the mayor. Letters, phone calls, and emails poured in from constituents who expressed their solidarity and their anger over the incident. Activists began organizing rallies, calling for justice, not just for Mayor Carter, but for every citizen who had been wrongfully targeted by law enforcement. While many were shocked and outraged, others saw this as an opportunity for real change. Local leaders, community organizations, and city officials rallied around Mayor Carter, knowing that this moment had the potential to spark long overdue reforms within the police department and beyond. The incident had brought the city together, united in their call for accountability. Latoya's video of the incident, uploaded in real time, went viral within hours. Millions of people watched as Mayor Carter was wrongfully arrested, and the video quickly became a national sensation. It wasn't just a local news story anymore. It had turned into a national discussion on racial profiling, police misconduct, and the abuse of power. Social media platforms were flooded with comments, reactions, and shares. Celebrities, politicians, and activists weighed in on the situation, with many expressing their outrage at the treatment of a sitting mayor. This is why we keep fighting, one prominent civil rights leader tweeted, along with a link to the video. It doesn't matter how much power you have. If you're black in America, you're treated like a suspect. The video sparked debates on major news outlets with commentators discussing the broader implications of the incident. How could something like this happen to someone as high profile as a mayor? If this was happening to a public figure, what did it say about how ordinary citizens were being treated by law enforcement? William's calm demeanor throughout the video became a focal point for many, with people praising his composure in the face of such blatant disrespect. The mayor handled this with dignity, one social media user commented. This shows true leadership. He stayed strong even when they tried to break him. The viral video also brought international attention to the city as media outlets from around the world picked up the story. The footage of a black mayor being handcuffed and humiliated by a white police officer became a stark symbol of the racial tensions still present in society. As the video continued to gain traction, it became clear that this incident would not be forgotten easily. The public wanted answers, and they wanted change. As the video of the wrongful arrest continued to spread, the public's demand for accountability grew louder and more forceful. Across the city, protests and rallies were organized with community leaders and activists calling for swift justice. Crowds gathered outside City Hall and the police station, holding signs that read, Justice for Mayor Carter and End Police Abuse. The anger in the air was palpable, and the people were no longer willing to tolerate silence or inaction. At these rallies, citizens shared their own experiences with racial profiling and police misconduct, using the incident with Mayor Carter as a catalyst to voice their frustrations. People who had long felt powerless in the face of systemic injustice now found strength in numbers, united in their calls for reform. It wasn't just about one officer's actions. It was about changing the culture that allowed such behavior to go unchecked. Mayor Carter, 
though still processing the personal humiliation he had endured, saw the outpouring of support from his community and knew that this was an opportunity to bring about real change. He understood the weight of the moment and the responsibility that came with it. The people were looking to him to lead the way, and he was ready to take on that challenge. At a press conference held outside City Hall, William addressed the crowds. His voice, steady and resolute, carried over the sea of people. What happened to me could have happened to any one of you, he said, his eyes scanning the faces of the people who had come to support him. This is not just about one incident. This is about ensuring that no one, no matter their position or background, is treated this way again. The crowd roared in approval, and the energy of the moment fueled the movement for accountability. The people were demanding action, not just words. They wanted to see Officer James face consequences, but they also wanted deeper, systemic changes within the police department. The city's leadership could no longer ignore the calls for reform. The public had spoken, and they were prepared to keep fighting until real change was achieved. As the investigation into Officer James' actions began, the backlash against him was swift and severe. James, once seen as a respected officer within the department, quickly became the target of public outrage. The video of the arrest, now seen by millions, painted a clear picture of his abuse of power, and the people demanded that he be held accountable for his actions. Internal Affairs launched a formal investigation, reviewing not only the events of that night, but also Officer James's entire record. It didn't take long for investigators to uncover a troubling pattern of complaints against James, many of which had previously been ignored or dismissed. He had a history of aggressive behavior, particularly toward black citizens, and the department's failure to address these issues was now coming to light. The pressure on the department grew as more people came forward with stories of their encounters with James. Citizens who had been too afraid to speak out before now felt empowered by the public's response to the mayor's wrongful arrest. Their stories, combined with the viral video, painted a damning picture of an officer who had repeatedly abused his authority. James, now suspended from duty, faced not only the internal investigation, but also the possibility of criminal charges. His name became synonymous with the problem of police misconduct, and the media coverage of the incident ensured that he would never escape the public scrutiny. His colleagues, once his allies, distanced themselves from him, unwilling to be associated with the scandal. For James, the fallout was swift and brutal. His career in law enforcement was effectively over, and he became a pariah in the very community he had once served. But for the public, this was only the beginning. They didn't just want one officer held accountable. They wanted the entire system to change. With the mounting public pressure and the growing evidence of Officer James's misconduct, internal affairs wasted no time in stepping in. The investigation into his actions was thorough and comprehensive, leaving no stone unturned. Every detail of the incident from the initial stop to the wrongful arrest, was scrutinized. The evidence against James was overwhelming, and his defense began to crumble. Interviews were conducted with witnesses, including Mayor Carter, the officers who had arrived on the scene, and bystanders who had captured the entire event on video. The footage, combined with witness testimony, painted a clear picture of what had happened. James had overstepped his authority, allowed his personal biases to dictate his actions, and violated the rights of a man who had done nothing wrong. As the investigation deepened, internal affairs uncovered even more troubling patterns in James's career. His file revealed a history of complaints, many of them involving excessive force and racial profiling. While some of these complaints had been quietly closed without proper investigation, the current investigation brought them all back into the light. The department faced intense scrutiny for its handling of James over the years. How had someone with such a problematic history been allowed to continue working in law enforcement? Why hadn't these complaints been taken seriously before? These were the questions the public, the media, and even the department's own officers were asking. For Chief Shaw, this was a defining moment. She knew that how the department handled the investigation would set a precedent for the future. She was determined to see justice served and to ensure that the department took responsibility for its failures. Shaw made it clear that the investigation would be transparent and that any officer found to have acted improperly, either by participating in misconduct or by covering it up, would face consequences. The wheels of justice were turning 
and the city watched closely, waiting to see what would happen next. As the investigation into his actions progressed, Officer James found himself backed into a corner. His career was crumbling, his reputation in tatters, and he knew that the public and his own department had turned against him. Desperate to salvage what little remained of his life, James attempted to defend his actions, offering explanations that only further damaged his case. In an internal affairs interview, James tried to argue that he had followed protocol during the traffic stop, claiming that Mayor Carter had acted suspiciously and that his actions were justified under the circumstances. But the investigators, armed with the video footage and witness testimonies, saw right through his flimsy excuses. Every word he spoke only deepened the hole he had dug for himself. There was no need for the escalation, one of the investigators said sternly, showing James the video footage of the incident. You had no probable cause, and your actions were clearly motivated by something other than maintaining public safety. James fumbled for an explanation, his voice shaky. He, he was being difficult. He didn't show respect, James muttered, clearly grasping at Strauss. The investigators exchanged a glance, their expressions cold and unforgiving. Respect is earned, Officer James, and in this case you showed none. This is about more than just one bad call. It's about a pattern of behavior. We've reviewed your record, and this isn't the first time you've been involved in questionable stops. The interview went from bad to worse as James's attempts to justify his actions fell apart under scrutiny. His defense was weak, and his attitude, once defiant, now seemed more desperate than ever. The mounting evidence against him was undeniable, and his career in law enforcement was hanging by a thread. Despite his efforts to defend himself, it became clear to everyone involved that James had no reasonable justification for his actions that night. The damage had been done, and now the consequences were inevitable. While Officer James scrambled to defend his actions, Mayor William Carter remained calm and resolute. Despite the personal humiliation he had endured, William was determined to use the incident as a platform for change. He knew that his response in the aftermath would shape the future of law enforcement reform in the city, and he was committed to leading with dignity and strength. After the internal investigation was completed, William held a public address, speaking directly to the people of his city. Standing at the steps of City Hall, surrounded by community leaders and activists, William's voice was steady but filled with purpose. What happened to me was not an isolated incident, he began, his eyes scanning the crowd before him. It is part of a larger issue, a systemic problem that has affected countless people in our community, especially black men and women. This is not just about one officer. It's about a system that allows this kind of abuse to happen again and again. The crowd made up of citizens from all walks of life listened intently as William spoke. Many of them had come to see him not just as their mayor, but as a symbol of resilience and leadership in the face of injustice. His calm demeanor and unwavering resolve had earned him even more respect than before, and his words resonated deeply with those who had experienced similar treatment by law enforcement. We cannot allow this to continue, William continued, his voice growing stronger. We must demand accountability, transparency, and reform. This city deserves better, and I promise you, as your mayor, I will do everything in my power to ensure that real change happens. This is our city, and we will rebuild it together. The crowd erupted in applause, their faith in William stronger than ever. His response, measured and focused, had galvanized the community. He wasn't seeking revenge. He was seeking justice, not just for himself, but for everyone who had been wronged by a broken system. William's speech marked a turning point. The people were ready to stand with him in the fight for reform, and his leadership became the rallying cry for change. In the weeks that followed, William's leadership helped bring the city together in a way that hadn't been seen in years. Community meetings were held where citizens shared their experiences with law enforcement, and for the first time, people felt like their voices were being heard. The city, once divided by fear and distrust, began to unite around a common goal, to ensure that incidents like what had happened to Mayor Carter would never happen again. Reform wasn't just a word anymore. It became a movement. Under William's guidance, the city began working with legal experts, activists, and police reform advocates to draft new policies aimed at increasing transparency and accountability within the police department. 
The reforms included mandatory body cameras for all officers, stricter guidelines for traffic stops, and the establishment of a civilian oversight board to review complaints against law enforcement. Mayor Carter was at the forefront of these efforts, working tirelessly to ensure that the changes being implemented were meaningful and lasting. He met with police officers, community leaders, and citizens to discuss their concerns and to build a bridge between law enforcement and the people they served. The police department, now under increased scrutiny, began to adopt the reforms. Chief Shaw, fully committed to repairing the department's fractured relationship with the community, made it clear that there would be no tolerance for officers who abused their power. Training programs were revamped with a focus on de-escalation techniques and community engagement. Officers were encouraged to build relationships with the neighborhoods they patrolled rather than policing them from a distance. The city began to heal, and the incident that had once threatened to tear it apart became the catalyst for progress. The community's trust in its leaders was slowly restored, and for the first time in years, there was a sense of hope that real change was possible. As the reforms began to take hold, Officer James faced the full consequences of his actions. The internal investigation concluded with a clear recommendation. James should be dismissed from the police force immediately. His actions had not only violated department policy, but they had also undermined the public's trust in law enforcement. There was no place for him in a department that was striving to rebuild its relationship with the community. James was formally terminated from his position, and the department made it clear that this decision was not just about one incident. It was about setting a precedent. Officers who abused their power would no longer be protected by the system. Justice long denied to so many was finally being served. In addition to losing his job, James faced the possibility of legal action. Civil rights groups, angered by the blatant abuse of power, began discussing the possibility of filing a lawsuit against him for his wrongful arrest of Mayor Carter. The city's legal department was also considering charges of misconduct and abuse of authority, which could lead to criminal penalties for James. The public, who had watched the situation unfold with growing outrage, welcomed the news of James's termination. For many, it was a sign that the system was finally starting to hold those in power accountable. But while James's dismissal brought a sense of closure, the community knew that there was still more work to be done. The city had taken a significant step forward, but the fight for justice and equality was far from over. With the fallout from the incident behind them, the city entered a new chapter, one defined by progress, unity, and a commitment to justice. The reforms initiated by Mayor Carter and his team began to take root, and the relationship between the police and the community started to improve. Officers were no longer seen as enforcers of power, but as partners in keeping the city safe. I William Carter's leadership during the crisis had earned him widespread admiration, not just within his city, but across the country. He had become a symbol of resilience, grace, and determination in the face of adversity, and his name was now associated with the growing movement for police reform and racial justice. The community, once fractured by fear and distrust, had come together with a renewed sense of purpose. People from all walks of life joined forces to support the changes being implemented, and the city became a model for other municipalities grappling with similar issues. Town hall meetings were held regularly, where citizens could voice their concerns and offer input on how to continue improving the relationship between law enforcement and the public. For William, the journey had been difficult, but he knew it had been worth it. The city was stronger now, more united, more just, and more focused on the future. He had faced the humiliation and injustice head on, and through his leadership, he had turned that pain into progress. Standing in front of City Hall on a bright spring day, William looked out over the crowd gathered for another community event. Families laughed, children played, and people greeted their neighbors with smiles and handshakes. The city was healing, and it was a beautiful sight to see. As the sun set on the horizon, William couldn't help but feel a deep sense of pride. The work wasn't over, but they had come so far. Together, they had turned a moment of injustice into a movement for change. 